a new valent back with us. I think this might be their fourth time, which uh, it's incredible that we can have uh, direct communication with uh, people who are doing clinical trials. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening. We have our new valent friends in the house again. Um, Mark's like, it's like, how many times have you hosted Saturday Night Live? They are back with us again, we believe for time number four. So we are so happy y'all aren't sick of us because our community is always so eager to have you here with us. So thank you so much. And I do not need to go on and on raving about how much we adore them um, and their dedicated staff. Um, they're all so fabulous as you will all see if you haven't watched one of their talks before. So Chris Turner, take it away, please. The Chief Medical uh, Officer for New Valent. Yeah, thanks, Summer. The feeling is definitely mutual, uh, mutual. thrilled to be back here. So Chris Turner, the Chief Medical Officer of New Valent, uh, and just so excited to, to be able to talk to you guys all this evening. Uh, with me from the New Valent team, I have uh, Jim Porter, our CEO. Uh, good evening, everyone. It's, it's so nice to be with you all. Nice to see some familiar faces. Uh, I have uh, Megan Flynn, who is, leads up our medical affairs. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here with you all tonight. Thank you for the invitation. I have Dr. Viola Zhu, who is, heads and is the medical monitor for our 655 and ALK program. Why will I is good enough, Chris. Uh, <laughs> Hi, everyone. Very excited to be here tonight. And also have uh, Lindsay Wilson, who uh, is uh, the clinical operations and helps us execute the clinical trials that we've been running. So, and welcome, Lindsay. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, so, again, really thrilled to be here this evening. Um, as I think most of you are well aware of, we presented an update from our NVL 655 alcove trial at uh, European Society of Medical Oncology or ESMO meeting last month, and where we updated um, the phase one data from the alcove one trial. And this evening, uh, Viola is going to walk through what we presented publicly for that uh, uh, for those of you who either did not catch it or would like kind of a layperson's uh, explanation to it. So Viola, take it away. Great. Um, can everyone see my slide? Great. Thank you. Uh, so glad to see many of you online. And uh, uh, many thanks to Summer and the Elk Positive Group for inviting us back. <laughs> So as Chris mentioned today, uh, the focus of our discussion is going to be the comprehensive phase one data set of the ALCOV-1 study presented at ASMO last month. Let me see how I advance my slides here. Um, this is our company's forward-looking statement. Um, as some of you may be aware, we have transitioned our study, the ALCOV-1 study, uh, from phase one to phase two in February of this year. The phase two portion of the study is actively ongoing, is enrolling extremely well. Many thanks to uh, all of your support. In fact, uh, during ASMO, we press release that we had already enrolled 229 patients for phase two. But for tonight's uh, discussion, we will be focusing on only the phase one portion of this clinical trial. By the way, NVL655 has already received FDA breakthrough therapy designation for patients who have previously received two or more LTKIs. The global phase two portion of the study is ongoing with registrational intent. Okay. So uh, let's go right into the ASMO data uh, presentation. NVL655 is a rationally designed elk selective tract sparing TKI. So on this slide, you're looking at some of the key characteristics of this compound. 
On the left-hand side, this is the compound's activity against the elk fusion and elk single and compound resistance mutations. In the middle, you are looking at brain penetrance similar to lorlatinib. On the right-hand side, which is the key differentiation characteristic of MVL655, avoidance of track inhibition. We want to avoid track inhibition in order to minimize some of the CNS toxicities you may see with other LTKIs such as lorlatinib. And we were very proud to uh, share that the preclinical data of NVL655, along with three case studies, were published on cancer discovery simultaneously as this uh, ASMO presentation. Now, the alcove one study, again, is actively ongoing, um, but for the phase one portion, we dosed a total of 133 patients from June 2022 to February 2024. So 20 months, 133 phase one patients across all six planned dose levels. It's really an incredible milestone for everybody. We selected dose level five, um, 150 milligram daily as recommended phase two dose, RP2D. For phase one, we enrolled elk positive solid tumors, including elk fusion positive non-small cell lung cancer patients who have to see at least one prior second generation or third generation elk TKI. So the TKI naive patients and chrysotinib only patients were not eligible uh, during phase one. However, they are not eligible for phase two. Okay, uh, evaluable but non-measurable disease was allowed uh, during the phase one portion of the study, but for phase two, we have to have patients with measurable disease because we are going to use blend, blinded independent central review to evaluate uh, responses for phase two. All right, among 133 patients, 103 patients are non-small cell lung cancer patients that are response available. Here, you're looking at patient characteristics and treatment history. This is a heavily pretreated patient population. For example, 56% of the patients have baseline CNS metastases. 26% have baseline compound ELK resistance mutations, often seen during sequential ELK TKI therapy, such as chrysotinib followed by electinib followed by lorlatinib. The median prior line of anti-cancer treatment is three. 84% of the patients received a prior lorlatinib where there is no effective ELK TKI therapy. 44% received three or more LTKIs, including second generation and lorlatinib. The preclinical activity of NVL655 is summarized on this busy slide. Uh, for all dose levels, the overall response rate is 38%. Okay. We are separating this data set by patients who received the prior lorlatinib and patients who are lorlatinib naive. So the ORR for prior lorlatinib is 35%. The ORR for lorlatinib naive patients is 53%. The response rates are even higher for patients with baseline ELK resistance mutations, okay? The bottom half of this slide is showing you a very busy waterfall plot. Um, again, separating by patients with prior lorlatinib versus patients without prior lorlatinib. The bars are color-coded by the number of prior LTKIs. Solid dots denote patients with ELK compound resistance mutations. Half dots ELK single resistance mutations. 
Now, for the first time, uh, we disclosed the duration of response uh, for our phase one uh, patient population. We care about duration of response because not only do we want patients to have a rapid response from NVL655, but also we want them to be able to stay on NVL655 for as long as there is clinical benefit, right? Our ultimate goal is for patients to live with ALK positive non-small cell lung cancer, to be on an effective therapy and to have, you know, very decent quality of life. So here, looking at all those levels, the medium duration of response is 14.4 months. The rate of duration of response of six months or, long, or longer is 78%. We're separating this uh, data points by patients with prior molatinib, where the median duration of response is 9.2 months, and the rate of DOR of six months or longer is 75% versus patients without prior lorlatinib, where median DOR is not reached, and the rate of DOR of six months or longer is 88%. Okay. Next, looking at patients with baseline ALK resistance mutation. So this is a subset of the patients on the previous slide. So the medium duration of response for all those levels is 14.4 months. The rate of duration of response of six months or longer is 85%. Again, we're separating this um, two data points by patients with prior lorlatinib versus without prior lorlatinib. In the middle, you are looking at actually patients with baseline compound ELK resistance mutations who have previously received lorlatinib. The median DOR is 14.4 months. The rate of DOR of six months or longer is 80%. On the right-hand side, you're looking at patients with baseline ELK resistance mutation who are lorlatinib naive. So it's a small subset of patients, but the median DOR is not reached and the duration of response of six months or longer is 100%. Essentially, everybody's response was durable at this data cutoff. Moving on to CNS activity, it's obviously a very quick critical clinical endpoint. We want our drug to be able to get into the brain, to treat tumors in the brain, and to prevent tumors from growing in the brain. So on the right hand side, you're looking at this waterfall plot highlighting CNS radiographic tumor shrinkage among patients with measurable CNS lesions at baseline, separating this by patients with prior lorlatinib, where you see intracranial overall response rate of 15%, two out of 13 patients, versus patients who are lorlatinib naive where the intracranial overall response rate is one out of two. The right lower, right lower corner, you're looking at a swimmer plot showing you the duration of treatment for all confirmed CNS responders. The green dots are highlighting CNS-DR, complete response. Purple dots, CNS-PR, partial response. So no CNS progression was observed among all confirmed CNS responders with treatment duration of up to 14.4 months. Here you're looking at a case study of a patient treated at one of our sites in France. This patient previously received three lines of therapy, including chemotherapy, alatinib, and lorlatinib, with CNS progression on lorlatinib. Patient also had ELK comp double mutations at baseline. This patient entered our study, received NVL655 100 milligram daily, which is our recommended phase two dose, was able to achieve a complete resolution of multiple baseline CNS lesions. And this observation, this resolution was maintained at 10 months, okay? And the treatment continued at 11 point 
four months with ongoing confirmed CNS CR complete response at the cutoff data cutoff date. The MRI images on the right hand side are showing you one representative CNS lesion that disappeared with treatment. In addition, we are giving you some follow-up information on two case studies we presented at the um, A&E meeting last year. One patient at the time had a CNS CR, the other patient had CNS PR. Both patients still have their treatment ongoing around uh, 14 months or so with confirmed responses. Now switching gears, let's talk about preliminary safety profile of NVL655. On the right hand side in this table, you're looking at treatment related toxicities occurring in 10 or more percent of patients. This are ALT increased, AST increased, both the lab abnormalities, okay? constipation, dysgeusia, which is altered taste, and nausea. The dose reduction rate is 15% and dose discontinuation rate is 2%. So the preliminary overall safety profile is consistent with avoiding track related neurotoxicities. Now, uh, as we mentioned, as Chris and I both mentioned early on, uh, the uh, Alcove 1 study is actively ongoing. It's at the phase two portion. We're enrolling both TKI naive and TKI pre-treated patients. Um, the cohort design is based on the type and number of prior LTKI therapy. Very importantly, we have a basket cohort here that is you know, to capture non-small cell lung cancer patients who otherwise are not eligible for the previous four cohorts. This is our strategy to really leave no patients behind. And the first two cohorts um, are registrational. Okay, We also have a cohort for other solid tumors. So here is a list of our clinical trial sites that are, are participating in this study at this data cutoff. Um, you know, this study really, it's not just about New Valen, it's not about just about the LCOV-1 study team. In fact, I like to say it's not even about the study investigators or site staff. It's really about all of you and your families. We're just incredibly grateful for your support and enthusiasm. So last but not least, we had our internal team plotting our uh, clinical trial sites on this global map. Now, when I looked at this map, I couldn't help but felt like, wow, the world is actually a huge place, right? There's still a lot of lung cancer, lung cancer patients out there, L-positive non-small cell lung cancer patients out there who don't even have access. Now, I'm not even talking about clinical trial access. I'm talking about access to perhaps even standard of care to, you know, um, to even perhaps molecular testing to identify elk, right? So New Valent, we are working as hard as we can. The goal is to deliver NVL655 to all patients, but there's a bigger Oh, we lost you, you, you Viola. Just, you just muted for some reason, Viola. Oh, mute. Is that, can yeah, you guys yeah. hear me? Okay. Yeah. okay, so I was just trying to say there's a um, bigger agenda to me, which is about global healthcare delivery. Now, we are not politicians here. We're not running a political campaign, but I wanted to say that I feel like a patient support group, a successful 
is yours is really one step further in terms of achieving that goal, which is to deliver, you know, health care to everybody. We want everybody to have access to standard of care, to cutting edge technology and to, you know, um, innovative clinical trials, including ours, because in the end, all lives matter. So with that, I'd like to end my talk and thank you for listening.